Welcome to Stick Like Glue Radio, the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Marketing and business building expert Jim Palmer, known internationally as the newsletter guru, is a serial entrepreneur, author, speaker, and coach to other entrepreneurs. Jim is the host of Newsletter Guru TV, a weekly web TV show featuring Jim's unique brand of smart marketing and business building advice. Check it out today at www.newsletterguru.tv. Please welcome your host of Stick Like Glue Radio, Jim Palmer. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to Stick Like Glue Radio. This is the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more, and those are always all great things in your business. I am your host, Jim Palmer, and I'm committed to helping you build a more profitable business faster. I'm so excited about this week's show because my special guest is Rick Barker, who's had a really exciting career in the music industry. I love music. I've been in music a long time. My son's in music, and so we're just going to have a little bit of fun today. There's always going to be some good entrepreneurial lessons, but um, let me get started off just sharing a little bit about Rick. He is a... um, personal manager, marketing consultant, and public speaker. He lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and Rick has had an amazing career in the uh, music industry, managing hit country pop star Taylor Swift, which is amazing. After 15 years in radio, Rick worked at a uh, record company called Big Machine Records. I want to ask him about that. And realizing, you know, traveling the world with musicians wasn't a good fit for family life, Rick became an entrepreneur and founded the Music Industry Blueprint. Sounds like my good friend, Gary George, so we'll talk about that, too. So, hey, Rick, thanks for being my special guest expert today. I'm, I'm excited for our listeners to get to know you better. You know, I'm excited to be here, and it, uh, you're right, music is, is one of those things I didn't have the talent to do so I got into DJing and then went out and found talented people and learned how to promote so there is a place for everyone if you love music so that's the hope that I give I you know when I was um, when I was 12 years old um, that was right about the time the monkeys were coming on the air and um, I I I was just thought Mickey Dolenz was the coolest (laughs) now I know he didn't play drums at all (laughs) and I wanted to be a drummer and uh, my parents forbid me to spend the money that I had in the savings account from cutting lawns and whatnot on drums until I just showed up with them one day. They were so ticked off. But I did learn how to play the drums, and it was in a band all through high school and things like that. And now my oldest boy, kind of, well, my oldest son, he's 31 now, picked that up. So music's a big part of our life. And um, so, you know, first of all, if, take a minute and just share a little bit more about you and who you are and how you came to start the Music Industry Blueprint. Maybe give us the um, you know, sure. one or, or two-minute version. Sure. I uh, I basically did my whole radio career in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, back note is I'm 46 years old, so I did everything that I could to destroy my body in the 80s living in Hollywood, California. And when that didn't happen, uh, I decided that I tried that side. Sobriety would be the route for me. So I ended up in Santa Barbara, California, and fell in love with radio. It was always a passion of mine. My voice had changed at a young age. I'd always been that guy that everyone would always say, dude, you sound like you should be on the radio. So I ended up pursuing my dream, uh, got an internship at KISS FM in Los Angeles, uh, drove a van around for Rick Dees, handing out money and you know, doing all this thing. But I ended up getting my first chance to be on air in Santa Barbara, California. And when I got to Santa Barbara, I absolutely fell in love with the town, Uh, that's where I got sober, that's where everything was for me. And I decided to be a big fish in a small pond. And while doing radio, I started promoting bands. I started utilizing the radio station to help build these bands. And at the time, we had some fantastic bands, you know, Toad the Wet Sprocket, Ugly Kid Joe, Dishwalla, all these bands were coming out of the Santa Barbara area. So in 2001, I ended up getting asked to launch a country radio station in the San Inez Valley. It's where the movie Sideways, that wine movie, about 10 years ago was was uh, was filmed in the beautiful wine country there. And I fell in love with country music and the artist. Ended up coming up with an idea to help artists start touring. Uh, it, I wasn't the first guy to come up with it, but I was the first guy to finish it. That's one of the things that I, I tell people people in business is you don't always have to be the first to think of it, but if you become the first to finish it, it can do wonderful things for you. So I created this touring model, helped launch some great acts, 
Uh, in radio, you work for the passion of radio. It doesn't pay a lot of money. So I was working three jobs, making about $60,000 a year in all three jobs, and then all of a sudden, with what I created, got the opportunity to go work for Big Machine Records. Big Machine Records up my salary. That was awesome. I got a chance to be a record promoter. What that means is I just went around. I had nine states, 70 stations at my job was to get their music played. Uh, we had a 15-year-old at the time named Taylor Swift. We were ready to take her out for radio. She didn't understand radio. I came from radio, so they shipped her and her mom out to me in California, spent 30 days together that ended up changing both of our lives. She wanted to learn. I wanted to teach. After quasi managing her for six months from California, uh, later on in the 2000. Uh, five, they came and asked me to be her full-time manager. So without any experience, just a passion for her, a passion for her music, I went into becoming her manager full-time. Uh, did that for almost two and a half years. And the, my last year with her, 2007, from California, I was gone 185 days. Having a wife and a four-year-old and a two-year-old at the time, I realized that this just wasn't for me. You know, I'm I'm the kid that grew up poor on food stamps. You know, I I never came from money, so it was never about the money for me. But I also came from divorced parents, and I knew the toll that that would take. So I ended up choosing the family. Called her, took her to lunch, told her I'd forever be grateful. The relationships, the doors that opened were amazing, and that's when I launched uh, my own marketing and consulting company, continued to manage folks. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, came up with the idea for Music Industry Blueprint. So that's kind of the little longer than two-minute version to get you to where it's at right now. But uh, it's it's funny, Jim, because I share at college. I go in and uh, my my pitch is, so you want to be in the music business, how can a kid with a GED who grew up on food stamps continue to make over six figures in this business and not be able to sing or play a note on an instrument? And they all start laughing. So uh, what a great story, Rich, uh, Rick. Thank you for so much for sharing that. It's so, I mean, everybody's going, holy smokes, Taylor Swift, wow. And, you know, I really got to um, hand it to you. You know, we've, we've, we've just met, but I got a lot of respect for you. A good friend of mine, Gary George, um, started a video business and ended up getting into TV and music production, worked with a lot of big stars. But he was gone so much. And just like you, he had a young family. And he left that whole thing and, and started a new business where he's, you know, doing SEO and a bunch of other things. He, he works for my business. But, you know, he really made a lifestyle switch. I just have so much respect for people who do that. You know, what's interesting is that a lot of people don't understand it because this business is built around not walking away from the it thing. You know, I have people that come to me right now. And what I found was was that, Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I choose to be in a dysfunctional business. What I tell people is we're trying to function in a dysfunctional business. Our rewards are not in direct proportion to the work that we put in. And most people are accustomed. You work an hour, you get paid an hour. You build a product, you get a certain amount for that particular product. Not in this business. And that's what's frustrating. That was what was kind of hard to watch the artists going through these things, if they can do everything right and still get dropped from the record label. I could invest my consulting business my last year before I ended up shutting down my management company. You know, I was grossing over 300000 putting close to 200000 back into the business, but none of my clients were at a point where they were – where I was making anything from them by ways of commission, but I still needed to keep the, the office open. And I was like, wait a minute, that's ridiculous. You know, that's not smart business, and it wasn't until I met somebody outside of the music business and brought them in as, as a person to mentor me did I realize that I'm doing what every young artist is doing. I'm out there looking for that next big superstar. But in my mind, the back of my mind, I'm like, wait a minute, what if I get it? Am I going to be committed to taking it? all the way, and I realized that I wasn't, which is something that's really hard to do for a lot of entrepreneurs, is, you know what they say sometimes, be careful what you wish for. You know, I realized that, you know what, it wasn't going to change. If I found another Taylor Swift, I still was not going to want a tour. If I wanted that, I would have stayed where I was. So what I did was, is I stepped outside, and I started watching all these talent shows, and I started watching all these people come to town, and I started watching these parents 
put second mortgages on their houses because their kids could sing and start spending money on $60,000 records when all of a sudden their kid's voice was going to change. And I'm like, time out a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on here? And what I realized was in a normal business, you walk into a town, you go into the Chamber of Commerce, and they say, hey, Mr. Barker, here's your great idea for a business. Here's your bankers. Here's your electricity people. Here's this. Here's that. There wasn't anything like that for the music business. There was a lot of things teaching people how to sing, teaching people how to play guitar, all those things, how to write music. There was no one teaching people how to be artists. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I just helped launch one of the biggest stars in the world. I love to teach. What I didn't mention is I also have a background in coaching. While I was doing radio in Santa Barbara, I also coach soccer at UC Santa Barbara. Uh, so I, I have a coaching background. I love to teach people. And there is a never-ending supply of potential clients. And what I mean by that is every year, somebody else wants to be famous. People keep having babies that want to be famous. And if, I, if they can sit there and tell their kids, listen, by the way, we're not moving to Nashville. We're not selling the house. But there's a way that we can work with the same person who launched Taylor Swift's career. I made it very attractive. The only thing I don't do and will never do is I don't use Taylor as a way to advertise to get people to me. I was taught early on that that can be very dangerous because what a parent hears is he can make my kid the next Taylor Swift, and what a kid hears is, oh, my gosh, he's going to use all the resources he has to make me the next Taylor. There's never going to be a next Taylor. So what I do is I use whatever marketing I can to drive people to my website, and then I let them find out about me and Taylor. I don't use that as a way to draw them in. I just think it's misleading. And that's, that's I've been rewarded generously by taking that approach. And that was something that was given to me by another entrepreneur that said, look, people right now are grasping. Don't give them something if you can't deliver it. And I right. went, great point. Great, yeah. great point. You know, I'm actually um – uh, actually, next week I'm going to be down in Nashville. I'm doing a keynote for some doctors. And um, one of the things that uh, I, I talk about in my business is operating with full integrity, so I really resonate with that. You know, the other thing I found out, and um, the other thing, I, I don't know if you're familiar with this, I just finished my, my fifth book called Stop Waiting for It to Get Easier, Create Your Dream Business Now. And, you know, Rick, people don't want to do the hard work. They want to. They want the magic pill. They want the silver bullet or the lottery ticket. And yep. that not only is that a bad way to think, but want, but wanting the easy way out really wreaks havoc with your mindset. In other words, if you think there's an easy way for me to get from zero to a million dollar business, you're not going to do the things you need to do. You know what I mean? So, it, oh, it's absolutely. Really, it's great that you're doing that. And um, you know, the other thing you said is. Uh, it, it, I agree with this. It's there's, it's not about starting. It's always about finishing. And um, so I think it's great that you you know you've created this program to help people get started. And you know you educating people on the hard work. Look, everybody, you know, they're not necessarily going to hire you to teach them how to tune the guitar. Obviously, no, I'm not that guy. Tune, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. you can teach them you know different strategies and techniques on how to be successful from the business standpoint. Well, here's what's great about this, Jim, is that there has never been a better time to be in the music business. With all the technology and the things at our fingertips, we have direct access to the fan base 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere in the world. And the key is learning how to utilize that. You know, one of the things that's very interesting in my business is there's no single place where someone can click a button to send me money. Nowhere. I have that set up specifically for a reason. What I do is I've taken a couple different approaches. I'm a student of Brendan Burchard's and Jeff Walker and Jay Abraham. So I've combined these gentlemen's knowledge and resource and applied it. So what I do, and this is something, I'm looking for long-term business. I'm not looking to excite someone and get an impulse buy. I've been on the other end of that impulse buy and purchased a $26,000 real estate course because it sounded fantastic and I was rah-rahed for a day and a half. So I've been that guy. What I do is I make people, I give them four videos, almost 20 minutes each, where I am teaching them the business at no cost to them. And then I make an offer to them. And that's one of the things that I, if you would have told me that I would make the money that I make 
by giving away more information than I'd ever given away, I would say you were absolutely nuts. That is what I've proven, what I try to tell people, is that I give people the opportunity where I get to become an expert to them. But what I also do is if they don't have the time to spend almost an hour with someone who's helped launch one of the biggest careers in the world, who is currently consulting two of the major labels in the world, they don't have what it takes to be in this business, and I would just be taking their money. So I use that also, Jim, as a weeding out process, and I tell them that from the beginning. This business isn't for everyone. If it was, everyone would be in it. We would have 10,000 Taylor Swifts and Justin Bieber's. There is no magic pill. There is no magic formula. There, is, there are no shortcuts. And a lot of it has to do with preparing yourself for the opportunities. And that's what I encourage entrepreneurs to do, is to get the tools and get the resources and prepare yourself for whatever opportunity comes your way. And that's what I promise people within the music industry blueprint, is now I teach them. They have a membership site they go to whenever they want. I teach the business in video form. I do monthly webinars, and they have my phone number. I'm one of the few people in any industry of gurus and teachers that actually gives his personal phone number to his clients. But what I share with them is I said, look, treat this as, as an insurance policy in the music business. If you start using your insurance all the time, your rates are going to go up, and then I'll move <laughs> you into a consulting program. No one abuses the privilege, which is awesome, but the fact that they can get access to me for less than $10 a week for the ability to pick up the phone and say, hey, what do I do about this? It's changing my life and my family's life, but it's also changing their lives. And that's one of the things I learned from Jay Abraham is that if you build your business to better your client, it will better you. Awesome. And that's, really how, that's how I live. I mean, that's, that's how I live right now is it's how can I serve you because it ends up serving me tenfold. Just awesome stuff. I'm so enjoying this. I almost forgot. We're going to take a quick pause here for a very brief time out. But on the other side, more great information with Rick Barker. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. In the best-selling book, No BS Direct Marketing, legendary marketer Dan Kennedy said this, My single biggest recommendation is the use of a monthly customer newsletter. Nothing, and I mean nothing, maintains your fence better. Dan is absolutely correct. The truth is, for just about any business owner, the greatest potential for new business and higher profits lies within its current customer base. Stronger customer relationships yield higher sales and more profits, and a monthly newsletter is the best relationship-building tool, bar none. Unfortunately, for many entrepreneurs, the struggle of producing a newsletter every month is too much, and it just doesn't get done. But no longer, every month, No Hassle Newsletters members get 24 pages of Jim's famous customer-loving content and his amazing ready-to-go newsletter templates. Your company's No Hassle Newsletter will generate more repeat and referral business in less than one hour per month. Join the hundreds of entrepreneurs already using No Hassle Newsletters at www.nohasslenewsletters.com. That's www.nohasslenewsletters.com. All right, we are back, and let's get right back to my very special guest, Mr. Rick Barker. So, Rick, you know, you mentioned social media a few minutes ago. What are some of the other ways that you can help musicians kind of market themselves and, and kind of get the, the business side of, of, of their career going? The key is, is that every time you perform in front of a live audience, you need to figure out a way to capture their data and to bring that data and then utilize it to your advantage. What most people do is they have people sign up for a list. No one wants to be on a list. Uh, one of the bigger problems that musicians are making right now is they expect their fans to do things that they would never do themselves. So what I try to teach people is learn how to communicate. And your program is, is a real good idea. I mean, with the newsletter, it's like the newsletter ha can't be a sales letter. Once you understand and identify who your client is, you need to send things that are of value to them. What I tell people is when my phone rings, I can look at it and know if I want to answer it or not. Everyone does. There are certain emails that come across my email that I delete automatically just because I know that there's, there's a consistency of there not being any value in that email. So what I try to do is I try to teach artists to learn how to communicate with their fans, 
do the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time be giving, so the 20% when you need them, they'll be purchasing. So when you're on Twitter and when you're on Facebook, and with a lot of entrepreneurs, that's what your business is. You're just taught to do it wrong. You need to utilize it as a way to drive people to get on a list. If Facebook, Twitter, YouTube shuts down tomorrow and that's the only way you've been communicating with your client base, you're in trouble because you don't have a way to get to your client. You need to get to the email list and then once you get the email, you need to give something of value. What we've learned is, uh, in our business anyway, fans want to uh, hear from you every couple weeks. They want to hear what's going on in the studio. They want to hear about other music you like, not just your own. You know, they want to know what you're up to. So we end up creating what we like to call the fan avatar so that we know how to communicate them through the various forms of social media. The problem right now is people just kind of get lazy uh, and they put it on autopilot. If I can give one bit of advice to anybody listening, never send out another picture of a dog holding a coffee cup that says Happy Monday. <laughs> that is just flat out laziness. We all get it. One of the things that people will learn when they really dig into social media is that there's a difference between being active and being engaged. Engaged means that we're having a two-way conversation. So start posting questions. You know, if you see something you like, share it on Facebook. If you are an entrepreneur who has a business, you should go with your fan page, your like page as they call it, and go like every single one of your competitors and every single place that you think people are hiding out. You need to go like them first. Most of you sit around and wait for them to like you. It doesn't work that way. Everything reciprocate. Go out and find them. They'll find you. And then there's tons of tricks and tons of secrets. And um, you know, if, if you guys end up going to my website, even though you may not be in the music business, what I teach is universal for business in general. And it, it will show you what you have to do. And what I had to do was I had to say, okay, I am the artist. My content, my music that I'm selling are my videos, are my newsletters. That's the content that I'm creating. How would I do that if I was a music artist? So everything that we teach is universal, and that's one of the things, Jim, that I think a lot of people will go out and Google search and go, oh, my gosh, I, I can't find anything on the music business. Well, we're all in the sales business. So go out and start learning how to sell. Go out and start learning how to market. Go out and start learning the things. We're not in the music business. We're in the sales business. There's a lot of music being made, but if it's not being sold, you lose your record deal. So you better learn how to sell. You better learn how to communicate with your fan base, and that's in any business, not just the music business. You know, you and I sing from the same hymnal, whether it's newsletters or social media, I teach the same thing. It is not yep. your soapbox. It's not the place for you to get on and just, you know, spout off about how great your business is or about, heaven forbid, don't get on there and start talking about your political views and things like no, that. No, no. It, it is a place for you to connect with people on a, on a level that they want to be connected with, you know. Um, you know, I, I do a lot with Facebook, but I, I post daily success tips, inspirational things, things, mm -hmm. and I, I occasionally post some some G-rated humor. And the reason I do that, Rick, is I think I want people to know or come away with the feeling it's fun to visit Jim's page. If if every once in a while they visit my page and I've got like a thirty comment stream going about the gun law or about whatever the hot topic is that's no fun you know sure and so it's it's always my my rule is it's about information and entertainment and if people leave with a good feeling or visit with a good feeling that's a good thing well and people also want to know who they're in business with because ultimately you want me to be in business with you and if jim is constantly talking about jim we all have that person in our life that all they do is talk about themselves, and all we do is make fun of them to our other friends. So don't become that person on social media. It's so easy to do that. But if I sit there and say, man, every time Jim posts something, I get to know a little bit more about him, but it also seems that he's got a pulse on who I am as a person as well. And that will create a longer-lasting relationship. That will mean that when I see a post from you, I want to open it. If I see an email from you, I want to open it. If I get a referral from you, I know that Jim understands who I am as a person because we built that relationship. It will make me want to open. And that's what I think most business owners forget to do is to, to show that side of them, but not in, I always say, leave politics and religion out of it. You will never win that battle, period. Yeah. 
There's way you know, too much other stuff that we can talk about. <laughs> I agree. And Rick, we're down to like uh, about two minutes or so. I want to give people a chance to connect with you. Um, sure. If there's a certain website or if you're – I know you're on social media and things like that. You've given a lot of great information. How can people learn more about you and where, where should they go to do that? Sure. If you go to – the easiest one to figure out is Twitter, at Rick Barker Music. And once you get there, there's a link to my website. My website is musicindustryblueprint.com. My email is rick at rickbarker.com. I make it super simple, super easy. I always love talking business. doesn't have to be the music business. I'm just a, a freak when it comes to entrepreneurs and sharing ideas and brainstorming. I love it because I learn something from everyone I talk to. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad we connected today here on the uh, podcast. I hope our paths cross at a seminar or, or live event very soon. Next week, I'll stalk you. <laughs> I don't know what kind of security they're going to have there, but maybe. That will be fun. Thanks, thanks again, Rick, for your time today. really appreciate it. You're welcome. And that wraps up this very special episode of Stick Like Glue Radio with Rick Barker. Stick Like Glue Radio is the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. I'm your host, Jim Palmer. I am committed to helping you build a more profitable business faster. Watch for another great episode of Stick Like Glue Radio next week. And until then, keep taking action, keep moving forward, and don't ever, ever, ever give up. Now go out there and do something nice for somebody today. Take care, everybody. You've been listening to Stick Like Glue Radio, the only podcast dedicated to helping you create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Stick Like Glue Radio features Jim Palmer's unique brand of smart marketing and business building advice for action-oriented entrepreneurs. To make sure you don't miss a single profit-boosting show, subscribe to this podcast at www.getjimpalmer.com. If you know other entrepreneurs looking for the fastest way to hire profits in their business, please tell them about the Stick Like Glue radio podcast. Now go and implement what you've learned and boost your profits. See you next week for more Stick Like Glue radio.